welcome to Bothering the Band. My name is Ryan Beinick. With me, as always, is the short hair, chimney sweep, Abigail Ann Levy. <laughs> we have a great episode with author, musician, comedian, television personality, Mr. Dave Hill. Oh, my goodness. This is a show in the making. Uh, our good friend, mutual friend, Eric Schmidt, has been pestering me, bothering to get Dave Hill on. And of course we've wanted him last time we were going to record with him a few weeks ago. He got COVID and, or so he says, but yes, very exciting episode. Abby, are you ready? I'm so ready. Are you ready? (laughs) I'm so ready. Can you hear us? Hello. Hey, man. Hey, how's it going? It's going quite well, Dave, from before. <laughs> thanks for uh, thanks for doing our pot. How are you feeling? You were Me? sick the last time. Oh, supposed to do I'm, this. I'm good. Yeah, yeah. I'm back in action. I'm, I'm sorry I totally dropped the ball last time. Oh, no worries, um, man. Uh, that usually leads us to guilt people like into the next one. That way we know oh, good. we won't miss the next one. It all worked out. <laughs> It did. Uh, so welcome to Bothering the Band. My name is Ryan. This is Abby. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Hello. Um, so we always like to start this this thing off with uh, how are you and where are you? I'm pretty good. Um, I'm in New York uh, where I live and I'm pretty good. A little, little tired today, but not in a way that will affect my I don't know. I just never really got out of the gate today. I think maybe I'm hungover. That could be it. I don't think so, though. I don't. I, I shouldn't be, but I've become a lightweight. So, well, what were you drinking last evening? I just drank three beers last night, which isn't a lot, but uh, I don't know. Sometimes that's enough to make you know. I'm very delicate. Well, so were I, they like craft beer? Yeah, they were. I don't know something called zombie three Floyd zombie dust. <laughs> I don't know what it was. They might have been like high alcohol or something. I don't know, but I just uh, I just didn't. I don't know. I just was drinking them. One hey, thing uh, zombie dust sounds like it'll do the job. Yeah, it's possible. So we have a mutual friend, uh, Eric Schmidt. Oh, nice. I love Eric. <laughs> love Eric. He's one of my best buds. Spoke to him um, yesterday because I sent him a book. I sent him the Ben Folds bio- autobiography. And oh, I wow. I wouldn't have, if, I would have sat here all night guessing, and I never would have guessed that was the book that you sent him. He likes Ben Folds. He's one of the people that is big Ben Folds guy. How do you I feel like, about Ben Folds? I'm pro, I'm pro Ben Folds. I don't, I mean, I don't listen to him regularly, but I do like him. I've met, I did a show with him once. I met him. Very nice guy. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Um, I was going to ask, does, do you, does Eric owe you money or something? Cause he pushed really hard to have you. He was like, have you gotten Dave Hill? I would say every day for six months. Oh, good. And it, then it, you, it took you that long to give in. Well, we were just saving a good spot for you. Well, I guess it worked. Maybe. I No, I don't know. I was probably like moping to him or something, <laughs> saying hi, what well, haven't been asked to do this podcast. <laughs> and he he was like, I'll make it happen. And I was like, I'll seriously jump off a building if you don't make it happen. I'll give myself COVID. Yeah. <laughs> so here we go. We did it. It's happening. We did it. And uh, our first dumb question is, what fabric pant are you wearing today? I'm not proud to admit this because I'm not really, I'm not dressed for uh, human interaction. I'm wearing track pants right now. Oh, um, complete which, with the stripes. I really, which I would only wear them if I were going to go running to the dog run, which I did. The only thing I did today was go to the dog run. 
other than that, I've not been outside. I'm uh, well taking my dog out, but I haven't I haven't done any uh, official human interaction today, and I, I would never wear track pants like socially or professionally or anything like that. So these are my secret uh, pants. Just they lazy. Could be, they could be your podcast pant. They're my podcast pants. They're just my around the house slash dog run pants. I have a whole, I have like two completely different looks that most people only know one side or they know the other side, but very few people know both sides. And the one side is super casual track pants, t-shirts, hockey jerseys, or ripped jeans. And then the others like more, uh, uh, you know, suits and things like that. Dressed up, dainty. But like usually people that only know me like from around the neighborhood or the coffee shop in the morning only know me as a slob. And then other people know me as someone, you know, a man of refinement. I would say you have like three three looks. You have the the from I, at least a waist up right now. You have the very like metal Matt Pinfield look right now. Black Matt shirt. Pin, Matt Pinfield look. <laughs> if I have a Matt Matt Pin, no offense to Matt Pinfield, but if I have a Matt Pinfield look, <laughs> I better uh, take a good hard look in the mirror. I regretted it as immediate, immediately. <laughs> that said, uh, I, the first time I met you was at Eric's show, and you were dressed in all of your finery. So that's how I imagined. I was wearing all the finery. Time. Well, yeah, yes. I never, I never perform or go to dinner or really do anything like just wearing a t-shirt. Though I did. La it was really hot last night, and I went to see a friend's band, and I reluctantly wore just a t-shirt. But I really, I was gonna power through and dress up a little more, but then I was like, "It's so hot, I can't." You're like, "I gotta go with the Pinfield look." <laughs> I went with, I went full Pinfield. Uh, now I, now I have the question of, do I lean into the joke or do couldn't I back it? Couldn't off? it be argued that you also have the Pinfield look? I do, because you're uh, wearing a black T-shirt. That's all I wear is black t-shirt, jeans, very Pinfield-esque. I have a lot of black. I have way too many. I, I kind of have a rule where I'm not allowed to buy any more black t-shirts. But yeah. I'm sure I will. Probably <laughs> probably later tonight I'll buy another one. But I, I have, uh, broke mine today. Go ahead, sorry. No, I have, I, have, I think my girlfriend counted at, I had like 300 t-shirts. And I've given a lot of them away, but got or gotten rid of them. But I have a shitload. Too many for this yeah. lifetime. You're you're speaking to the choir here. Abby and I both have a lot a lot of band shirts. Lots of band shirts. Even though this one is a is a Chinatown shirt. What does it say? It says Jay Giddis Associates. From, what is that? It's from the movie Chinatown. It's uh Oh, it's from the movie Chinatown. Yeah. I didn't get it in Chinatown. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was like, why would there be like a that shirt in Chinatown? Okay, now I'm getting. Are you guys also in New York? No, Abby, I'll let you take this one. Abby, you take it. You're awful quiet there. Yeah, for real. It's freaking me are, out. Are we officially podcasting? <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. I got to turn it on. I got to turn it on. <laughs> um, I'm located in Wyoming currently. No and, way. Where? Um, Jackson Hole. Oh, that's a that's a that's like the only city I know in Wyoming that I I've been there. I've been to Jackson Hole. The what's the thing with the uh, the horns? The or the antlers are all stacked in the things. The, the arches in People the town love square. That. They People do. People love it. Mm -hmm. okay, you take picture. your photo. Yeah, you have to. I was there when I was a kid. I don't know if I've been back. Or maybe I have been. I don't even know. No, I'm really it's a good wondering. Town. Oh yeah. yeah. I may relocate there. <laughs> You've sold it's, me on it. 
it's not an easy feat. I'll tell you that much. To re to relocate there, it's not. Um, it's very hard to live here. There's not there aren't very many places to live. It's very expensive as well. Oh, oh, I see. It's a desirable location. Mm -hmm. And um, um, we're surrounded could... by protected land, so nowhere left to build. Oh, wow. I love that. So where do you live? Not an address or anything. I'm actually in a little town about 45 minutes south. Of, oh, okay. Of there, but I say Jackson Hole because nobody has ever heard of Alpine, Wyoming. Oh, I love Alpine, Wyoming. <laughs> I, I actually uh, mm -hmm. have a summer home there. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is a summer home community. Are you um, over at the airport? Do you Are you one with the planes over there? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just as you said that, I looked out my window. Not that this is amazing or anything, but there's a plane flying above outside my window here. Like right when you said planes, I looked out and I saw a plane. I mean, I guess it's not that amazing, but kind of I'm easily entertained. <laughs> I found it entertaining as well. Yeah. <laughs> I think this started with where we were. Ryan's in Florida. It's I'm reluctant there. reluctantly in Florida. Where in Florida? Um, South Florida, about 20 minutes west of Fort Lauderdale. Oh, beautiful this time of year. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's like the devil. Yeah, I was. I've been. I'm, I'm not to brag, but I've been to Florida. Oh, we know. We have some Florida questions for you. Oh, good, good. Yeah, uh, but I want to ask. I think this is what everyone's chomping at the bits: is music or comedy? What is the question? That's the question. Oh, which is music, music or comedy? Or comedy. And there's no uh, <sighs> wrong answer. Well, I guess if that's how you're going to rephrase the question, and if so, if I'm not going to read into the what you mean by that, I would say music because music has like way more uh, suits many more moods, I think, and like you can kind of go down all sorts. I mean, comedy. There's all sorts of comedy, but I think with comedy, there's like a certain sense of humor that you have or respond to. But with music, there's more like you can be into all sorts of music. Whereas I feel like comedy is not quite like that. You can be into different stuff, but there's usually more of a thread or something. Like I, I don't want to name something and be like, you can't like this and also like that. But you know what I mean. Without me taking shots at anybody. I think we're picking up what you're putting down. Picking up what I'm putting down. Uh, but I guess like if someone's like, you can only ingest or something, <laughs> comedy or music, I would pick music. You can't love hip hop music and Jeff Dunham comedy. Right? I, I mean... I think you've just described uh wait, Jeff Dunham is uh he's the uh you might be a redneck. No, no that's Foxworthy. Dunham that's is a Foxworth. Puppet. This is see, this is I'm an idiot. I of course I <laughs> I shouldn't have made that error because I, I actually like Jeff Foxworthy a lot and I'm told he's a very nice guy. Jeff Dunham, I don't know. I've seen his but I was saying like if you really like hip hop and you like Jeff Dunham's comedy you might be a Kid Rock fan. <laughs> Why can't hip hop fans also love puppets? I think they can. <laughs> I mean, I have nothing against Jeff Dunham. It's not my thing, but I guess the only thing I would say about Jeff Dunham is when I've seen his, his, uh, what I saw, it seemed like his fans, even though he's, I guess, satirizing certain kinds of people people seem to be cheering in a way where they were like not laughing at what his puppet was saying but more like yeah that puppet's right <laughs> you know what i mean let's start a jeff dunham podcast where we just dissect yeah. <laughs> but uh, that's not jeff's fault no 
I bet he's the nicest guy. And I think he's very good at what he does. So there. I know. I bet you he's like, these dum-dums don't get the bit. It just seemed, I don't know. The thing I saw, I sort of sensed that maybe the audience was like, yeah, that racist old man's got the right idea. <laughs> the racist old man puppet. <laughs> but what do I know? What, am, what do I know? I'm just some guy in track pants. All right, let's let's stay on clothes here. What's the deal with the Nordiques hat? Just as a as two hockey fans, Abby and I. Oh, you guys are hockey fans? Yeah, you're from Cleveland, no? I am from Cleveland, yes. You live in New York. I live in New York. A lot of your visual content, you're rocking that, especially in the cold weather. Yeah. You're rocking that Nordiques. It's my go to hat. I mean, not to brag, but I do have several winter hats. And uh, what happened was during the pandemic, I became that which I despise more than anything in the world, probably. Not quite. I I really, and this seems to be a, a look that's very popular in warmer, in Los Angeles specifically. People that wear winter hats year round which I think is, uh, is the, they, they tend to be also people that wear shorts year round, which I'm also not a fan of. I'm, I don't even own shorts. I'll go as far as to say that. I don't even, I never wear shorts. I mean, I don't think grown men should own shorts, but even though you may be wearing them right now and that's fine. I have friends, I have dear friends who wear shorts. It's not right for me. But anyway, to answer your question about, (laughs) I started wearing the Nordiques hat during the pandemic. I just started wearing it all the time. So I was at my girlfriend's mom's house and it was kind of cold. And then I found that like my body had adjusted or something to where I kind of always felt a little cold if I didn't have it on. And then... Uh, but I've not worn it in some time now, what with it being summer. But I, I do like, I like the Nordiques. They're one of my favorite. I think it's one of the best hockey jerseys, uh, like logos. Yeah. I have a Nordiques jersey. I have a Nordiques t-shirt. I almost bought a Nordiques sweater on more than one occasion. What other Nordiques paraphernalia do I have? Might be just the hat, the shirt, and the jersey, but it wouldn't surprise me if more Nordiques stuff. I have a Nordiques pin somewhere. Now I'm just naming Nordiques things I have. <laughs> but the thing is, I don't know. I just like that hat, and I just tend to wear it all the time. And it it fits well. Like it's it hugs the skull, but not too much. I have some other hats that are uh, pretty cool. Not to brag. But they are don't fit quite like the Nordiques, and the Nordiques hat has like a ball on the end, which suggests I might be uh, fun, I guess. So you know, I like to project that, like, hey, this guy seems approachable. He has a ball on the end of his hat, not like some prick that doesn't have, you know. Otherwise, it may like like some sort of prick, you know. Yes. I have to ask, uh, the phones are lighting up. I um, bet. The, is this li- where is this broadcasting to? An alternate NBC? reality? Oh, NBC. NBC. Yeah. yeah. Nice. NBC TV. Um, do your track pants have snaps on the side? No, I'm not, a mon- I'm not a monster. I think <laughs> that would be... Uh, I would never buy anything like that. I know what you're talking about. These track pants that I'm wearing, my my uh, girlfriend's mom got them for me because I had these other track pants that I bought literally over probably over 20 years ago, and they were just like had paint on them, and I'd gotten them caught in like my bike and stuff. They were ripped. They were just really, but. Uh, Despite, on the one hand, rampant consumerism, 
like wherein I have owned easily four or five winter hats. Uh, I am in other areas, track pants, uh, like I'll just wear them forever. So she finally was like, this has to stop. And I wore, she bought me a pair. And then you know what I did? Swore them both at the same time. <laughs> Yep. But now I just wear the one, but the pair that I have now, like, I feel like they don't, I'm sure it's my own insecurity, but I feel like they don't, uh, there's not the level of mystery I like to have in a pair of track pants. Like where I don't, I don't like, you know, I don't like my privates to ever, like interact with the fabric and let themselves be known to a stranger on the street. I'm not saying I will, I'm not saying like in a, an aroused sort of way, but you know what I'm saying? Like if certain fabrics, uh, I'm just a person, you know? Um, so these like are maybe not the other pair had like a mesh inside and then like another layer. So there was just no, any the, no one had any idea what was going on in there but now now i'm just wearing these and uh i don't know i'm sure it's fine it's not not they're not perverse in any way but i'm you know i'm a very like uh demure type to where i don't like to let people know what's going on downtown you know yeah what was the question <laughs> Uh, the let's we'll go we'll just skip to the next one. The next okay. question is: Does since we mentioned you're from Cleveland, uh, does Cleveland in fact rock? Oh yeah, I would say so. It rocks with authority. Oh yeah, there's a lot of rocking going on there. Always, I think like I've heard people's bands say this over the years that Cleveland's always a good place. The crowds are always good. People rock out. They're ready for it. You know, it's not like New York where you have the best of everything from all over the world coming through town all the time. So you can just be like, OK, what else you got, Bono or whatever, whoever, you know, in Cleveland, there's maybe fans are, I think, a bit more grateful. And uh, and yeah, just in general, there's a lot of great bands. A lot of people just ripping solos, stuff like that. Yeah, it's pretty rocking. Also, it's like very cheap, so it's a good place to have a band to rock out. Well, that's well, that's a good insight. Yeah, I'm trying to think of uh, Ohio bands, and my first only was uh, Black Keys. What are some other Ohio bands? What's that? Uh, emo band that has the ohio song oh you just hawthorne, hawthorne heights you're asking the wrong guy uh what are some other ohio bands guided by voices cobra oh, verde okay. uh i mean the raspberries uh who, who were a great band even though eric carmen has since gone on to reveal himself to be a complete nut uh but you know in the 70s i wrote some great songs um and uh who else there's a ton of bands but uh now I'm, I'm just naming a handful for some reason <laughs> who else brainiac they're good long gone but uh breeders arguably kim kelly dealer from dayton no oh, wow i don't think i knew um, that yeah, I think they formed in Boston, maybe, but yeah. Uh, um, who else? Yeah, I don't know. There's other bands. What's your favorite uh, New York City music venue? My, my favorite New York City music venue? I don't know. It depends. I was at St. Vitus last night. I love St. Oh, nice. Vitus. I like uh, Bowery Ballroom. Love the ballroom. Uh, I like. Where else do I like? Uh, hmm. Who did you see last night? 
said you saw a friend's band. Yeah, Crowbar. They're like a New Orleans sort of sludge doom metal band. Uh, buddies with a couple guys in that band. And I saw them and Spirit Adrift. And then there were a couple other bands that I unfortunately missed, but I just went and listened. One of the bands called Somnuri, if I'm saying that right, who I think are from New York. I like their t-shirts. So I was like, if their t-shirts are this cool, I bet their music's cool too. So I was just listening to them. Uh, right. And then I was like, I got to go do this podcast. I got to come back to this band later. Are they cool? Yeah, they were cool. What I heard, I only heard like a minute of it, but it sounded cool. Huh, yeah. We like and, cool their, and their t-shirts are very cool. We like cool t-shirts. Yeah, I love, yeah, I like a cool t-shirt. Who's your favorite writer? My favorite writer? Oh, man. Like, of all time? Uh, again, we, we, these are open questions. You choose how to answer them. Man. I don't know. Like, I should probably have some, like, really cool answer but I don't. Um, hmm. Favorite writer. It's a tough one. We can it's come really back to tough. it. It's really tough because, you know, I want to say something like, oh, well, there's no good answer really because, you know, if I say something like Hemingway or something, that's like, you know, it's like, well, you read, read that in freshman year in high school. That's your answer. <laughs> uh, but he's not. He's not my favorite. Uh, I'd have to go look at my bookshelf and really tell you. Or if really, if real, all the best reading is on my phone. Oh, you know, I don't know. Oscar Wilde. I don't know. George Bernard Shaw. Uh, I don't know. There's so many. Oh, devils. We just threw Dave Hill for a loop. There's so many great writers. Um, and it did like, sometimes I really, if I really like someone's writing, I don't really care what they're even talking about. I'll, I'm just on board for literally, they could be talking about cereal and I'm like, I'm in. But, uh, I should say like Keats and Gates, something cool. Uh, what did I, what did I, who's the guy? Uh, what's the, what's the book I was reading over the weekend? Uh, I'll tell you. And then and this guy is going to be my favorite writer. <laughs> oh, Jim Thompson. I don't know who that is. Who is that? Abby, you got anything? He's not my favorite, but he's really good. Um, Willa Cather. No, I don't know. So many. My dad loves Willa Cather. Crazy for her. And right near my apartment is one of, like, some place that she lived. There's, like, a little plaque. Um, and then the other day... I was walking by, uh, who's the guy, Alex Haley, the guy who wrote Roots? I saw some house that he lived in. Now I'm just naming buildings. Just buildings to avoid, and authors. avoid answering your question. How, how do you smell today? How's uh, uh, the Dave Hill smell? I would say it's probably pretty light, uh, not peak power um i showered last night and i'm not gonna lie if i've just showered and i've had access to all my soaps and lotions and uh mysterious balms salves oils i'm probably the best smelling human on earth 
But what kind of soap are you using? I'm glad Body you asked. Soap. <laughs> I use a, a sandalwood soap that I get in Chinatown. Well, I think it's, we just get it online at this point, but you can get it in Chinatown. Be in flower soap. And uh, it's super cheap if you buy it in Chinatown. It's like $2 for 500 bars of something, I think. It's probably like cancerous or something. I, I don't know why. I just figure if it's that cheap, then uh, something must be wrong. But uh, it's really cheap. But I just like the smell of it. I like a soap that really... Uh, sometimes I'll just get a soap and just run wild with it for a while. But that's one I use pretty consistently, like for the last 25 years. It's been the main soap in my arsenal of soaps. I use uh, my, my soap comes from Ireland. Ooh. Yeah. What is it? What's the nature of it? It comes from a spring in Ireland. Oh, I, oh my gosh. <laughs> See, I, w I know you the know, one you're talking about. Yeah, they carve it with a knife. Yes. For no apparent reason. Like, I don't know how they do that. Like, they show you, like, they they carve it with a knife, and then the, like, uh, manly yes, but I like it too. The beautiful woman, and then you're like, I think they're gonna fuck. <laughs> and uh, so yeah, that's a pretty good soap. I like I what I really like to do is shower in other people's homes and then I use all their products and then you feel like you're in the presence of a pleasant stranger for the rest of the day even when you're all alone you smell like your own hair and your own arm and you're like who is this magical person with their different you know irish spring but no my own anyway to answer your question though I showered yesterday. Also, like I went to this show and it was really hot and sweaty. And at one point, some guy was standing by me and then he whipped his head around and his arm, his hair got all over my arm. And I was like, ooh, that's gross. And when I got home, I washed my arm off because I was just like, the guy may be perfectly clean, but just the idea that some dude had just gotten his hair all over my arm, like it was like a horse's tail or something. Just uh, offended my senses. Had it been like a lovely lady, it wouldn't have bothered me at all. But uh, I got hangups. Have you? <laughs> Great segue <laughs> here. Have you ever watched the show Pawn Stars? Uh, no. Is that a reality show about yeah. pawn shop owners? Yeah. I think I've probably seen, you know, accidentally a few seconds of it here or there. Uh, but I don't know. As I recall, if it's the show that I saw, it's the whole thing. You're like, it's kind of guys. It's like beefy guys in T-shirts that are too small. Speaking of Matt Pinfield. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't. I, I've told Matt Pinfield is a lovely guy. I shouldn't. Uh, uh, speaking him in any negative light. Uh, I've never met him, but I heard he's delightful. Um, but yeah, they're like, they're like beefy guys and they yell about stuff on Pawn Stars. I got no time for that. <laughs> When's the last time you saw that squirrel water skiing video? Uh, not more, not recently enough, you know, I mean, I was watching TV today on the news. There was a thing about squirrels lay down like flat. There's like a term for it, like splooting or something where they kind of spread out over like a cold surface and they do it to cool off. But I'd be lying if I said I didn't get a kick out of that. I mean, <laughs> anytime you little animals and their antics, bring it on. I agree. That those are just adorable. Love adorable it. Animals and their Big, antics. That's. I mean, I'll talk about. I could. I lose whole days to that. Animals and their antics. You get me near a goat farm, forget it. 
cancel all appointments. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I love goats. You should do an animal Me too. like show. You should Goat. pitch an animal show to True TV where it's just you narrating nature shows. I think it would just be cool to be like, hey, I'm Dave. Today we're hanging with goats. Next, see you next week when we're hanging with the duck, the elusive duck billed platypus, uh, one of North America's most underrated attack animals. I mean, that's me not even trying. And that you can uh, already tell. It's pretty good. You can already tell that's a highly rated show. The phones are lighting up with with executives from N- NBC. Yeah, they're like, well, hey, Dave, what what's it going to take to get you to deliver on this animal show? You've just five million an episode pitched without even thinking about it. No, I love I mean, basically, I love animals and uh, that's all I want to do is hang out with animals. And you have a dog. I have um, a sweet dog. Yeah. Uh, uh, Abby wants to know all about your dog. I know it. I'm glad you asked. You? My dog's name is Lucy. She's part boxer, part pit bull, part hellhound. Uh, she's adorable. She licks her butt and licks my face, and I let it happen because I love her so much. And all we do every day, every day we wake up, I make out with her for like solid 10 minutes and then we go to the park and I drink coffee and throw the ball to her. And sometimes she'll yell at me like, throw the ball, you piece of shit. And she's, and then other times she's just like, not that into it. I was very, very, she's very complex. She likes playing ball. She likes eating snacks. Those are really her only interests, those two things. And then other than that, just kind of like curling up in a ball, licking my face, putting her head on my legs and stuff. And uh, yeah, that's we, we hang out all the time. Like sometimes, you know, I mean, despite being an international superstar and all that, a lot of times like I'm like, oh man, I got to change this life do something else but then i'm like well how that i couldn't because i it would cut into my hang time with my dog like sometimes i'm like i should go run a fortune 500 company whatever that is and then but i'm like well no because i got i'm hanging out with my dog so i can't what is lucy's favorite tv theme song Probably the theme song to the John Oliver show because I wrote uh, it. Yeah, that's what we were getting. I, if that's, that's what you were the hoping, right answer. Yeah. If that's what you were hoping for. Or I should have said the Munsters, maybe. Lucy which is, loves which Cheers. Is the first TV theme song that I learned how to play was the one to the Munsters. But the first TV song I ever accidentally wrote was the theme song of the John Oliver show. <laughs> Actually, that's not true. I I wrote another theme song. To another show before i forgot that i did that but i did there was a show called reverb on hbr i wrote that theme song i think i'm owed royalties for that that show i don't think i ever got paid is it on hbo max no it was on like 20 years ago but i wrote the theme song for that show reverb oh we gotta find it it sounds like a music show it was a music show and i wrote the theme song and then but the John Oliver theme song is is my band Valley Lodge's song Go. So they they just chose that song that I had already written. So which I was very grateful for. Well, we love the show. We love the song. Me too. Um, I think it's such a great show. Not and... the song's not bad either. <laughs> Until the add? vocals come in, then it really goes downhill. I lost my train of thought. I was going to ask something else, but I'll just go to the next question. When were you able to quit your day job? I think like officially. uh, I mean, arguably, I never got one because I've always avoided uh, employment, any like real day jobs, though I I have had them. But I, I would say 
2006 was when I, I definitely no longer had day job. So congratulations. Six, 16 years ago. Wow. 2006 was 16 years ago. Wow. I know. It's crazy. It was insane. last week. <laughs> it, fe it feels like last week, you know? Oh, man. I was, uh, I was about a year into New York City. You were living in New York City in 2006? Yeah. I was, love it. Miss it. How did you wind up in Florida? What, oh. what happened? Something must have gone horribly wrong. Uh, no, know, just kidding. Prison. Prison. Yeah. Uh, the next question is real dumb. <laughs> King of the Hill or Cypress Hill or One Tree Hill or Benny Hill or Hamburger, <laughs> Hamburger Hill. We could keep going. Uh, gosh. I mean, Henry I have to Hill. say... Cypress Hill, I never really liked them. Uh, I thought it was stupid that they always sung about... I would think it's stupid when people sing about pot. Like, I have nothing against weed, pot, marijuana, but I think it's stupid to write all your songs about... Like, if I were into ham sandwiches, I guess I would rather hear someone sing about like a sandwich they really like. Can then, you sing us a song about a ham sandwich right now? Ham sandwich, ham sandwich, ha ham and bread and cheese and maybe mustard. That's the theme song to the animal show with you. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't know. I I never. I know. I guess what was their song? Insane in the membrane. They were pretty good. Not my thing though. King of the hill. Uh, never really got into it. I didn't think it was bad. I just, you know wasn't that into it um just because like that was a mike judge show right king of the hill yeah i just like i love mike judge and i love so much of the stuff that he's done but that show i just didn't i liked it but i never like was like oh i gotta see this week's episode um mike if you're listening i think you're a genius he's a big listener uh so pl and please cast me in something uh okay one tree hill that's like a uh, i never saw that show wasn't that the show where it was like kind of quasi reality or no no i don't know that was uh like one, one of those tree. wb melodramas yeah like with the... attractive people yeah attractive, attractive pe teenagers attract played by 28 year olds teenagers in conflict yes uh that show can fuck <laughs> off i don't know <laughs> yes uh, that's the right answer we said there's no wrong or right answers on well, band. that's right benny hill i i remember like th that was on like would be on like the uhf channel growing up the, the pre-cable i just remember the v they would sell the vhs and show like clips of benny hill yeah well it was interesting because like i mean like we got monty python which you know one of the greatest shows and movies of all time and then benny hill and then so i think like in america people were a lot of people you know a long time ago were like oh benny hill i guess that's like what british people are into but it's really funny once I started going to the UK a lot, they were always quick to point out how embarrassed they are that we got Benny Hill on American TV because they all thought it was horrible. But as a kid, I was thought it was pretty entertaining. And uh, and he, he sounds like, well, like many people in show business, sounds like his life was like not all good times. And it was speculated that Benny Hill was actually a virgin despite like the rampant sort of sex or sexual everything on that show, it was speculated that he actually wow. was a virgin and like the scoop, the virgin. Benny Hill scoop on bothering the band. I don't know how much of a scoop. Topics. I mean, I'm pretty, 
I'm pretty sure it's on his Wikipedia page. So I don't know how much of a scoop it is. Wait, what was the fourth, fifth hill thing? <laughs> well, there's Hamburger Hill and then I and Henry Hill. Henry Hill. Who's Henry Hill? Goodfellas. Goodfellas. Oh, yeah. I'd, I'd like that movie. Uh, who? What's Hamburger Hill? Is that something from the world of war? It's uh, Vietnam. Yeah, no, it was a yeah. factual. It's a real thing, but they made it into a film with like Don Cheadle and Dermot Mulroney. And oh, I gotta it see that. Dylan McDermott. Get him confused. Oh, I was gonna say I was at a party. I was at a barbecue, and Dermot Mulroney was there. So I was got really excited because I was like, "Oh my god!" I was at a party with the star of Hamburger Hill, but apparently that's Dylan McDermott. So he might have been at the barbecue too. I don't really know. I don't think he was. Also, someone had to tell me that's Dermot Mulroney because I wouldn't have been able to. I'm not very good at celebrity spotting, especially in a barbecue <laughs> setting. So, what's your answer? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I guess I would say of the things mentioned. Hill Street I, Blues. What's your favorite hill? Oh, Hill Street Blues. Watch your backs, watch your rooftops, and most of all, let's be careful out there. Uh, I would pick Benny Hill just for nostalgia purposes of being a little, you know, young fella watching TV and uh, excited that a show from another country was broadcast into my living room in the suburbs of Cleveland, Ohio made me feel like, uh, Hey, there's a whole world out there. One day I'm going to see some of it. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I felt about Mr. Bean broadcast. Yeah. Yeah. Him. You go, Oh my gosh. Yeah. I did a show once in Mr. What's the, uh, what's the actor that is Mr. Bean? Rowan Atkinson. Rowan Atkinson. I did a show once and he was in the audience. But they, I, he came to, I was opening for Janine Garofalo in London and he came, I think presumably to see her. But I'm still bringing it up now on this show <laughs> just to somehow uh, make myself seem uh, better in some way. You're yeah, doing I'm a great job. Struggle. The ongoing struggle of life. What's your favorite type of cheese? <laughs> you know, this goes... Tough this question. Is, this is sort of like the one where you asked me my favorite author because I wanted to have a cool answer locked and loaded. But I'm still going to go, hey, Mon Monterey Pepper Jack cheese. It's always good. Nice. You know, it's pretty boring, pretty pedestrian. Uh, but, you know... You get you get me around some of that, and uh, some rosemary and thyme crackers. Forget it. <laughs> and even that, I was trying to dress up the answer because the saltine <laughs> is just fine. I don't care. <laughs> I like saltines. I always have I like saltines. I'll go through a whole sleeve of saltines left to my own devices. I'll be like, "Fuck it, I'll eat all this. I don't give a shit." It's the craziest yeah. shit I've ever heard. I know. Sometimes I'm on self-destruct. <laughs> I'm happy you went with Monterey Jack. I'm happy. Like, I, I, I got to agree with those, in your term, pedestrian cheeses. I, uh, which I got to write down now because that's fun. Pedestrian cheeses. Um, I like, you know. I like that. Colby Jack, too, I like. Yeah, I like it. I like a Jarlsberg cheese. And then Oh, now you're getting fancy. I don't even know, you know, Gruyer, however you say that. G R U Y E R E. I like that. Gruyere. Like get... Gruyere. See? I just had this conversation with my roommate last night. She can't say it either. It's tricky. But she's from New Orleans. That's isn't it like a French cheese? Gruyere. Gruyere. I didn't know. Last I didn't I know what that New was. New Orleans was in Louisiana, not France. Yeah, but they're French people. They claim it. I don't know. Gruyere. Don't know. Man, 
I didn't know what that was until I moved to New York city. And the one restaurant I worked at was like, we have Gruyere cheese. And I was like, I don't know what that is. And they're like, we also have Nutella. And I was like, that's fancy. No. What was this restaurant? It was fancy. called, <laughs> it was called Alice's teacup. Oh, do you know this place? It sounds familiar, but no, I don't. We're, I mean, we can cut it, but we're in the city. Well, do you live in the city or live in, in Brooklyn? I live in the West village. Okay. Yeah. You, know, was... you don't have to cut it because it's big enough that yeah. no one could like show up at my house. To I don't want me. all the fans, you know, all the Mike Judge is going to come and find you and give I'd you a be part. thrilled. I would be thrilled. I need some work. Mike Judge. Yeah. Abby, let's tweet. When this comes out, we'll tweet at Mike Judge and get him more. Or get Mike or get Dave. Work. Say, Dave needs some work. Get him some work on silicon valley again yeah all right next question have you ever owned a owned a visor or worn a visor you don't seem like a uh, visor guy no i don't wear other than i was gonna say i don't even wear hats but we started this whole thing <laughs> clearly i do uh but i don't wear i wear winter hats but i don't i brag I, what i said brag you and your hats. yeah I don't, I know, I would never, I probably have worn a visor as like a child, but uh, I can't, no, certainly not as an adult would I have a visor uh, on my, I were at all, no. That's, that's good. You, have you, you know who wears the visors? The people who? wearing the shorts. The people wearing the shorts, yes. No, like. Uh, Short people. Cargo shorts and visors. Yeah. They, like, visors are, it's like some guy that's like facing rape allegations. <laughs> yes. Same guy. We're talking about the same guy. It's a very rapey hat. <laughs> They're like, no, Scooter, he's a good guy. He's not, he's not a <laughs> rapist. It's like, well, 14 women say otherwise in this deposition. He's definitely from Florida. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is perfect for a scooter. Have you ever had a monster energy drink? I don't think so. I maybe ex I don't think so. Uh no. No. Abby, have you ever had one? You definitely have on the mountains, snowboarding shit. No. What? Well, what so I worked for Red Bull in college. Now I just don't like any re energy drinks. Like I'm not Red Bull centric. I just You're don't still like die any of them. Devoted no. to Red Bull. I've had a Red Bull before, but I just generally don't believe you should look to a beverage uh, for energy. For wings. For wings. Yeah, it can't be. It's gar. I don't know. I mean, I'm not the healthiest person, but I'm not a energy drink. I'm not uh, <laughs> that. I'm not whatever rock bottom is the the point where you're drinking energy drinks. Kid you're rock all fans. hopped up. Yeah, kid rock fans. Scooter, you're all hopped up on Monster Energy Drink right now. Admit it. I might be. No. <laughs> what have I had to drink today? Just I pretty much only drink. Black coffee, water, and various forms of alcohol. I don't really drink anything else. Good. That's what you're supposed to. Abby drinks all of those in chocolate milk. Oh, I love chocolate milk. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, it's I love it. I'm big time, big fan. Oh, let's get together and have some chocolate milk. Dang. Oh, no, no, no resistance from this guy. It's Monterey Jack. I just don't <laughs> seek it out. Like I'll once in a while, maybe when traveling, I'll be like, you know what? I'm gonna. It's time. I'm gonna have. It's like I don't get a cappuccino ever in the day to day, but when I'm traveling, I'll be like, yeah, I'm gonna get a cappuccino. Let's treat myself right. I mean, after all, I am in Denver. <laughs> I recently had a cappuccino in Denver. See, it wasn't so, terrible. No, so you know yes. what I'm talking about. I do. I do. Sometimes it's nice to just be like, 
you're somewhere else and you'd be like, I only drink cappuccino when I'm in <laughs> Sarasota or wherever. <laughs> Oh, the worst place to drink cappuccino, Sarasota, Saratoga Springs. Saratoga. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, do you smoke a pipe or have you ever? Uh, I did, actually. I'm glad you asked. Uh, right. My first year after college, my friend Chip, who we were roommates briefly, and he bought a pipe and tobacco because he liked the smell of it. So he thought maybe he would like to smoke a pipe. And we were like 22 years old, which is not prime pipe smoking years, tobacco pipe. And he, so he got it and he's like, oh, I like the smell of it, but I don't like smoking it. So I, friend that I am, offered to smoke it for him so he could enjoy it. So a, sur for, a surrogate part, a surrogate pipe smoker. I started smoking it for like a few weeks, I guess at night I would smoke a pipe around the apartment. And then I developed like this really bad cough. Like that, like for weeks after I stopped smoking a pipe and I, I never smoked a pipe again. Lesson learned. Good friend though. Yeah, I mean, that's the kind of guy I am. Like, if you, oh, you like the smell of something, I'll deliver that smell to you. And no, ma at, no matter what cost, no matter what toll it takes on my health. Happy to. Okay, uh, Miami, yes or no? Uh, probably no. Um, I, I don't know. I shouldn't say that. Uh, there's parts of it, um, as you probably no doubt are well aware, I was the star of the hit TV program, The King of Miami, in 2007. Uh, That's what made you quit your day job, right? It, it really, yeah, it was actually. Uh, yeah, that, that show, I got that show, and then I was like, it's official, I'm a star. <laughs> um yeah that was pretty much it uh that tv show and then uh though you know as any even a uh just a quick glance at my imdb page will tell you it's the only show that i've ever been that's been my show but i i did that show like i had just started doing comedy like two years before that show came out so like a year and a half after starting comedy i was shooting that show so i was like oh this is the uh this is the easiest business in the world they give you a tv show like after a year and a half so i was like oh i guess i'll just always have a tv show because this was so easy i can't believe how easy this was and then the joke, as again, one, another look at my IMDb page will tell you, the joke was certainly on me uh, because uh, it's the only show that's was ever, I mean, I've been on other shows, um, but yeah, I did that show and it's been all, I don't want to say downhill, but it's been, you know, uh, not exactly a mountainous region either, but uh I guess my point is, uh, most of that show was shot in South Beach, uh, which is horrible. And uh, so um, I, that's mostly where I spent my time in when shooting that show. And it was like, dzz, dzz, dzz. like my buddy Phil, who was on that show with me, we would go eat at Johnny Rockets every night. <laughs> because it was the only place we could find that didn't play j -j 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 music. So I know exactly which Johnny Rockets you're talking about oh, too. It's oh, right, really? It's the right best on one. South Beach. Yeah, yeah. We went there all the time because mm -hmm. we were like, where's the one place that doesn't have sh the shittiest music in the world playing? And it was Johnny Rockets. So we would go there like several times a week. 
during the filming of the hit TV show. And also, I America. believe that that building that that Johnny Rockets was is in was from in Scarface, featured in Scarface as well, I believe. Oh, I that's a bit of information I could have used. Oh, the old historic Johnny Rockets from. I I did like it. Like uh, there were other areas like uh, what's it called? Like Hylia. Like Hylia. Little, Hylia. Yeah. yeah. I like that. Uh, and then there was, but I didn't really get like to really experience Miami, like uh, the areas that I think I probably would have enjoyed a lot more. But and then the worst thing was the last night we were there. Someone in the crew was like, "Let's go." You know, my friend said he would have us over to his house, and we we're like, "Oh my!" So I was like, oh, "Cool, we can just go to someone's house and hang out and." drink beer at someone's house like normal behavior and then we went to this guy's house and we were listening to good music and at one point the guy put on that music and we're like what the hell we can't escape this music that's not i don't know i'm not going to tell that story on the moth or anything (laughs) but you know yeah Uh, how do you feel about dennis miller (laughs) Uh, Dennis Miller. I don't know. He seems like a dipshit. I don't know. I mean, I uh, is I don't I don't really keep up with him, but he seems like uh, he's turned into a right wing idiot. So fuck him. There. Oh, shots fired. Shots fired. I mean, he's a big uh, listener. He's a big listener. I don't know. I just don't have any patience for that at this point in my life. Yeah, he's probably <laughs> a prick. He seems like a prick. I don't know. Seems like yeah. a prick. Maybe he's not. But he probably is. I don't what? know. I think he's, you know what? There's probably nothing I can say. I'm not looking to take him down a peg and he's probably doing fine regardless. I just have oh. no 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 patience for he's gonna for, google himself he has google alerts set and right when this airs he's gonna get yeah. a little email and he's gonna be like motherfucker yeah he's gonna come after me <laughs> no um most important question i think we have is wh- what is your why did wait why did you of all people to ask me about why did you ask me about dennis miller i don't I feel know like man, there was tough a, to a reasoning <laughs> For all the no. every, all the other ones, I was like, I see why they asked me that. But Dennis Miller, maybe the comedy connection, or just the fact that like no one thinks about Dennis Miller, so maybe yeah, I don't definitely don't think about him. I, you know, just to get you on a tangent, see if you had an opinion, which you did. You had an opinion, but it's really I don't know. I guess my opinion on him is kind of lazy. I guess you know, it's not okay. to be down on myself, but. <laughs> Why not? When in doubt. Um, what was the next question? The most important question is, what's your, the, your favorite guitar you own and also your favorite guitar like in the world? Oh. Right back to cheese and books. It's hard to say. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Like, I mean, I have like... T- 20 of them right oh to the left of me and some of them would be my favorite but also my favorite in the world uh maybe this one i don't know this one's pretty sweet Ooh. gibson sg it's pretty i have a really good one but then i also like this one I don't know. I like a ton of them. Is there Maybe. one you want? Is it, you have like one like uh, white whale that you want to own? Uh, there's like a million, but I don't know. Like I have a Gibson ES three thirty right here. I would like to have a three thirty five. Um. Uh. I don't know, like, or a friend loaned me uh, this aluminum guitar from Electrical Guitar Company, so now I want one of those. 
Um, but I don't know, like, I have so many, and, like, I honestly, like, I don't need anything in in the world. <laughs> like, I probably need socks and underwear, like, for the rest of my life. I don't need, I've, I don't need anything. It's really hard to buy gifts for me because I don't, I don't want anything. I have my dog. I have some sweet axes. I have a lot of Matt F Pinfield t-shirts. I don't really need anything. But yeah, I, I, there's a, always endless guitars. If I had more room, I would buy more. Hmm. That's a great last like impression to end on. Um, however, I have to say, I laugh. This is not a question, but I do have it written down. I laugh at every one of your videos when you say, hey, it's Dave from before. I think that is the funniest shit ever. Oh, thank you. That's so nice. Thank you. Oh, hey, it's Dave from before. <laughs> so good. Thank uh, you. And I realize how awkward it is to have your bits said back to you. So tell us what's next for you. What you're working oh. on? What do you want to promote? What kind of pants or shirts or um cheese cheese i hope to eat some cheeses um i don't know i'm writing a new book right now i'm almost done with it i'm probably like 85 percent done with it it's my fourth book and it'll be out i actually found out i think it's coming out october 10th 2023 oh wow I, very i cool. don't i don't know what it's called so I can't really promote it because I don't even know what it's going to be called. I haven't even thought about it. Um, people can watch my special, The Pride of Cleveland, on YouTube if they want to really, uh, I don't know. Th that's me talking and stuff for a long time. Uh, who, who wouldn't want that? Um, what else? I'm do I'm going to be in Chicago September 9th and 10th at Lincoln Lodge. I'm doing a bunch of shows. Oh, nice. Lovely Lincoln I'm Lodge. doing some more touring with uh Puddles Pity Party in the fall. I've just booked my first two shows in Finland in October, October 4th. I'll be in Tampere, Finland. October 5th, I'll be in Helsinki. I don't know the names of the venues, but um I'm excited. I've never been to Finland. And uh, so I'm excited about that. If you're, if you imagine you have a fair amount of Finnish listeners. We do, we do. Huge. So I'm pumped. At, that's going to be fun. And then uh, also I just learned yesterday that Estonia is a two-hour ferry ride from Helsinki. So who knows? I might wind up in Estonia too. And if I make it to Estonia, anything's possible, I figure. <laughs> oh, Dave, this has been super fun. We can't thank you enough. What? Pro probably delete most of this, I imagine. Oh, we rarely edit. We just edit out ourselves. <laughs> Love it. Monster energy drink. I got to try that monster energy drink. So. I always feel like when you see someone with monster energy drink like t-shirt or hat, they're either a meth head or a douchebag. Or both. Or someone so the the common thread being they're not in control of their life. Mm -hmm. And they might not be either one of those things, but one thing we know is they're not in control. No. I shouldn't I'm, I feel bad. I always feel bad when I say negative things to talking about people drinking monster energy to drink. And I, I took a swipe at Dennis Miller. <laughs> he deserved it. Arguably, so much hate mail. I arguably hate took, kind of took a swipe at a few other people. Uh, I hate, I hate when I do that. But I can't stop myself sometimes. I'm imperfect. <laughs> Dave, tell everyone where to follow you and find your stuff. I'm on, I'm permanently banned from Twitter, so don't look there. Uh, Instagram, 
at Mr. Dave Hill, at Mr. Dave Hill. I'm also that on TikTok, but I tend to post more on Instagram. Uh, and then I have a website on the internet, DaveHillOnline.com. And I think if you did all those things, you'll lead a full and happy life. Which one Maybe. of you are the police coming for right now? Stage. I think it's New York yeah, City. I, right there. Yeah, New York. It's hell. The streets are hell. Can we please end it on that? Like his last word and then the siren in the background straight yeah. into the song. I love it. Boom. Dave, thanks so much, man. This has Thank been you. Uh, Thank you super guys. fun. My face thanks hurts from smiling and laughing. Thank you for having me. I hope I hope I did all right. Yeah, can't thank you enough. This has been great. We're we're big fans of your work and thank you. Uh, uh, you know, mutual friends. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna tell them I had a nice time. Close my eyes.